What are three important charts to have on inflation right now? Hi, I'm Jeffrey Roach, Chief Economist for LPL Financial. And in this edition of the Econ Market Minute, I want to share three of my top charts on inflation, the markets, and the Federal Reserve. So first, after many months of inflation coming in above expectations, investors finally got more favorable inflation data, and they cheered it on with a big stock market rally on the news. Both core and headline inflation rose less than forecasted, pushing the annual rates down considerably from the previous month. And in October, the annual headline inflation rate eased to 7.7% from 8.2% in September. Core CPI, which excludes food and energy, rose 6.3% from a year ago. The economy is still finding its balance after multiple supply shocks from a pandemic and a war, but we may soon see a more broad-based deceleration of consumer prices. Shelter costs rose year over year in October and contributed to over half of the rise in total inflation. As the housing market cools, this category will also ease, but we may have to wait until next year before it meaningfully dampens headline inflation. Shelter costs, along with other services prices, are generally stickier than goods prices and will take time to reverse the previous year's trend. But some services categories, they have turned over. Medical care prices declined for the first time since the middle of last year. And total services prices, excluding rents, fell in October from a month ago. The first time that happened since May 2020. These are clearly encouraging signs. Second, rent prices rarely decline month over month, but recessions often exert downward pressure on rents. And in this chart, you can see rent in 2009 outright declined for a few months as the housing market went through a much needed readjustment. Also in the early 1990s, rent was flat for several months with a negative month sprinkled in. Given the weaknesses in the economy, I wouldn't be surprised if even rent declines month over month. Watch the industry data as rents are starting to turn over at this point in the cycle. Third, the markets dramatically changed their tune after the October CPI report. The encouraging data on inflation was powerful enough to move implied rates for the end of next year, December 2023, lower by 50 basis points as you see in the chart. That is to say, the week before the CPI report, traders expected a Fed funds rate of roughly 4.9%, but after the CPI report, traders lowered expectations down to an implied Fed funds rate of roughly 4.4% at the end of next year. The takeaway here, we have work to do. We still have these inflection points that could create some volatility and expectations on future Fed activity could change dramatically. Keep your eye on your long-term goals. Don't get too caught up with the day-to-day -day gyrations. Inflation rates are still way above the Fed's target rate, but at this point, the direction of inflation is to the downside, and that is encouraging news. Well, that's all for now. Continue to follow me and the LPL research team on social media and take care.